Discussions about the impact of increased tariffs have been battled back and forth in Washington of late. Um, maybe some of our speakers will discuss that. I want to begin, though, with a bit of a historical perspective. Uh, some of you know what this is. This is ginseng. And in fact, Chinese consumers became accustomed to American ginseng a long, long time ago. In the 1700s, traders were already bringing ginseng from New England at that time to China. In fact, the very first American flagged vessel to travel to China, the Empress of China, which went in 1784, 1785, carried uh, 30,000, I'm sorry, 60,000 pounds of ginseng to do business. Uh, the Chinese government, uh, to commemorate the 200th anniversary of that first American flag vessel, uh, issued this coin in 1986. So we sent ginseng. What did we bring back? We brought back Nankin trousers in large numbers. That hasn't changed, of course. American imports from China still include a lot of manufactured goods, a lot of textiles. But we also, of course, brought back a lot of tea and porcelain. Uh, this particular bowl uh, was brought to the United States, not on that ship, but in 1800. But you can see they were already customizing products for the American market. How do you know? The American flag that is on, that is on the bowl. So a lot of products. Now ginseng is an incredibly profitable product. Uh, it goes for about $120 a pound, about 1,700 times the value of corn. One of the companies that sells uh, ginseng to China, or has been, is this one, established in Wisconsin in, uh, about 40 some odd years ago. And they have recently run into trouble. Why? because the tariff situation has complicated exports of ginseng to China. And so they're not shipping to China. So you won't be able to order mooncakes and that sort of thing. Is ginseng a big deal in America today? It is an important product, uh, but in terms of the total volume of traffic, it's not that significant. But still, the Wisconsin Ginseng Board wants to remind you that they're growing the stuff with love and uh, wanting to export it. We provide, America provides 10% of the world's ginseng supply. Now, agricultural exports is something that's very much been in the news because of the soybean tariffs, because of concerns Amer among American farmers with regard to pistachios and almonds and other products. And you can see that that trade has fluctuated but has been quite significant. The USDA yesterday projected, however, a 37% drop in exports to China. China is a very important market for the United States, and the United States is, of course, the world's largest agricultural exporting nation. Now, do Americans like trade? Yes, yes. Uh, two polls conducted by reputable organizations, one, the Pew Research Center uh, in July, found that about half of Americans thought that increased tariffs would be bad for the U.S. Forty percent thought tariffs would, uh, increased tariffs would be good. Now, what is good? What is bad? Of course, that is a very individualized uh, question. But the uh, Chicago Council asked slightly different questions uh, slightly later right, just a couple weeks ago. And what is interesting here is that in 2016, only 59%, 59%, still a significant majority, argued that trade was, on the whole, good for the US economy. 70% said that it was good for consumers. But not as many, not as many, only 40% thought it was good for jobs. But with increased attention to trade, these numbers have changed. Now 82% say trade is good for the US economy as a whole. It's good for consumers, 85% thought that. And 67% told these pollsters 
that it was good as well for jobs, so two out of three. So we can sit, definitely see some fluctuation. Now let's focus on the US and China specifically for a moment. China entered the World Trade Organization in December of 2001. Okay, and that's an important, an important milestone for the Chinese economy. If you look at China's exports of goods and services and Americans, America's export of goods and services, we see that the Chinese amount has increased dramatically. That's not news to anyone. Uh, it's gone up really quite significantly by 351 uh, percent from 2001 to 2016. If we went all the way to 2017, it would be higher still. But American exports have increased at a faster rate. American exports of goods and services have increased over this period faster than the rate of Chinese exports of goods and services to the United States. Now, very much in the news, of course, are the tariffs uh, that have been imposed. And President Trump's uh, trade warriors, as it were, uh, uh, Peter Navarro, a uh, Southern Californian, and Robert Lighthouser, they have been speaking uh, quite adamantly, quite loudly and consistently about the negative impact that trade with China has had. Lighthouser recently criticized the Chamber of Commerce, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and other business groups for promoting trade, even though he said it's not always in America's best interest. Peter Navarro, of course, is famous for the Death by China film and book and argues that trade with China has destroyed employment, vanquished employment. Let's look at some numbers. And this is very, it's much more complicated than what I'm presenting right now. The chart at the top here shows that American manufacturing, the value of it, has increased. Well, that's not a huge surprise. We're certainly producing more, we're buying more, and all of those sorts of things. Uh, but as a share of GDP, it has declined. Okay, so in 1997, manufacturing accounted for 16% of total U.S. Uh, economic output. And then by 2016, it had declined to under 12%. But that's not what... Peter Navarro and others, especially President Trump, have been focused on. They, of course, have been focusing on the employment question. And so we see that employment in manufacturing from 1947 uh, to 2017, it peaks in the 1970s, right about 1977. And we see as a share of total employment, manufacturing has also been on the decline. And so this is the theme that Navarro, Trump, and others have been hammering at, that this is about jobs in manufacturing. That's where most of the headlines are. And we are also focused on the issue for soybean farmers. But in fact, this trade war is very much centered not on the economy of the past, but on the economy of the future very much focused on the question of newer technologies, be they electric vehicles or artificial intelligence, semiconductors, these areas. We're fortunate we have a lot of experts with us to talk about this subject. Now, I just want to bring it home to California for a moment. California was the number one exporter to China of the 50 states in 2017. In terms of goods, you can see what we export, motor vehicles and things to be recycled, all the way down through semiconductors. In 2016, we were the top services exporter by far. Uh, we're 30% greater in terms of our exports of services than any other state. And you can see that Texas was number one just by a nose in exports of goods in that particular year. There are a lot of American branded products uh, that are sold in China. This, of course, is an advertisement uh, here for almonds, uh, a picture that I snapped in the Beijing subway. China, of course, has been investing. Chinese companies have been investing in 
California, particularly uh, with regard to uh, video games and logistics and other things having to do with uh, cell phone apps and that kind of thing. And we've seen more and more of that. California is the number one destination for much of this. And of course, many Chinese have voted with their feet and have purchased homes. We could talk more about these things. Uh, I've just given you a very quick rundown of some of the numbers and some of the trends in the US-China economic relationship. We now have a variety of speakers who are going to share with us some of their insights. They work in very different fields and will bring, in, will bring different perspectives. After each of them has had a chance to speak, we'll bring them up and it'll be time for your questions. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. I expect that you're going to have a very good opportunity uh, to hear a variety of views on a very, very important subject.